No, it doesn't. Maybe on a surface level you can compare the two games, but once you start actually breaking down the two combat systems, it's very easy to tell that these two games are barely even comparable because of how much more depth and polish is in Arkham Knight. Keep in mind for this video, I'm not talking about which combat system is more fun. What's fun is way more subjective than what is or what isn't a good combat system. Before I get into actual game mechanics, the first and easiest thing to point out is the amount of detail and variety with the animations in Knight make the combat feel way more satisfying. The most important part being the sheer amount of them. Batman feels like he has 16 times the amount of animations Spider-Man does, and that honestly might be true. Different counters depending on if there's one, two, or three enemies, different counters depending on if they're holding a weapon, different contextual animations depending on if you're near a wall, different takedowns depending on if they're holding a melee weapon, you get the idea. There's so much variety in these animations that you're very likely to go without seeing some of them until you watch a YouTube video or something like that. Aesthetics are important in all games, but it should be easy to understand why having great sound design and animations will go a long way in making your action game feel better, and in addition, play better. All of these animations are also being uplifted by some really incredible sound design that really makes you feel like you just cracked a guy's skull. In a vacuum, the combat aesthetics in Spider-Man are good, to even great at times, but compared to Batman, it's like night and day. Before Batman, let's look at how Spider-Man handles its combat. To start with the positives, I think the Spider-Man games do a great job of utilizing Spider-Man's agility, and while fighting, you'll constantly be moving from the air to the ground and bouncing from enemy to enemy. Having Spider-Man's main defensive option be a dodge instead of a block does a good job of keeping the pace of combat fast, while also being able to avoid attacks. Waiting to dodge till the last moment will give you a perfect dodge, which will also web up the enemy. You can also press X after hitting an enemy to leap off them. I like dodging attacks this way instead of with circle, because it usually leads to a follow up that doesn't knock enemies away. Spider-Man is also known for his webs and Insomniac has every other Spider-Man beat when it comes to incorporating his webs into the combat system. You could web enemies up with his shooters and certain abilities, and while they're webbed if they get knocked into flat surfaces they get instantly taken out. This mechanic adds another layer to the combat system, and is great for adding player expression. It's simple, but adds almost an endless amount of depth when it comes to taking out enemies in whatever unique ways you can think of involving the webs. The parry is a nice addition and makes sense as a natural evolution for the combat. It works against all melee attacks, not just the yellow undodgeable moves that certain enemies have. And a nice detail is that it'll make smaller enemies drop their weapons. Afterwards, they will attempt to pick the weapon back up, but it won't stay on the ground for other enemies to pick up like an Arkham Knight. Add on top of that a decent move list, a good variety of enemies, so what's the problem? The biggest issue is that the combat is extremely unbalanced. I stand by the fact that the mechanic of webbing enemies is great, but it's a double-edged sword, because webbing enemies is also the path of least resistance, and it's very easy to abuse this mechanic. This is less of a problem when you first start out and don't have all of the moves or any upgrades to the web shooter, but once Spider-Man is maxed, all balance basically goes out the window, even on the highest difficulty. It's not that the web shooters in particular are broken, it's that combined with the 8 cooldown skills, finishers, a rage mechanic, and the ability to stay in the air as long as you want creates this situation where unless you go out of your way to play a certain way, the game becomes extremely shallow. If your response to that criticism is that I just shouldn't be playing the game that way, I get what you're saying. I love Devil May Cry 5, and sometimes I'll hear criticisms of the game from a reviewer. Then when I watch their gameplay, they beat it on easy by just mashing one button. The difference between a situation like this and what's happening in Spider-Man is that I'm not being unfair to the game by going out of my way to ignore any of its mechanics. 
it's that I have to go out of my way to ignore some of its mechanics so that I don't trivialize every fight. Like I said earlier, this is about what game of combat is better, not which is more fun. Speaking of more fun, the reason why Arkham has a better combat system is because its combat sandbox has way more interactivity between the move list Batman has and the enemies he fights, alongside the ability to solve different combat scenarios in many different ways, which results in a nuanced combat system where you are constantly making small micro decisions while you fight, and creating your own unique playstyle of fighting as Batman. With the cherry on top being that the game has the same level of polish as a Rockstar game. Before getting into the more nuanced aspects, on a foundational level the combat in Arkham is way more well constructed and weighty. I've seen people criticize the combat in Arkham for being too simple, but it's only simple when looking at it from a surface level. If you want to completely ignore the scoring system, not use any gadgets, and beat the game one time on normal and call it a day, it's pretty simple. But if you spend time doing the AR challenges or playing the game on its highest difficulty, the complexity can start to show. When you attack, you can time your button presses to do critical strikes. These do more damage and adds 3 instead of 1 to your combo counter. Chaining these consistently will make you attack faster and faster, letting you build the combo counter extremely fast. And you can also do a throw counter by pushing the left stick towards the enemy and pressing triangle at the last moment. This does more damage than the regular counter and gives you some crowd control. Circle doesn't do damage but is good for hitting multiple enemies and it's how you start a beatdown. A move that looks really cool and can be good for building up the takedown meter. Before moving on I just want to emphasize how so far every mechanic has some sort of extra utility or added benefit besides just doing damage and that extends to the entire move list. Even the way Batman moves during combat can be used to your advantage. You can control who Batman attacks by moving the left stick, and you can very easily use this feature to dodge moves or to target specific enemies. This magnetism also isn't exclusive to the regular punch and extends to his grounded moves that can be used by holding R2. One thing I like to do is knock down an enemy that's far away then use R2 and circle to quickly reposition and start hitting someone else. This same strategy works with the grounded takedown, and R2 and square lets you hit grounded enemies. This is all great, but what really makes the combat shine is how its mechanics interact with the different variants of enemies. Let's look at rock, paper, scissors for a second. We all know how to play, but how would it work if we added a fourth option? One way to balance the game is to make one of those options better than the rest. So now rock beats scissors and whatever this new fourth option is, but the rest still only beat one. This might seem unbalanced, but since paper beats rock, paper suddenly becomes a better option. Furthermore, so does scissors. This is what we call the metagame, or in other words, a game within a game, and is a concept that Batman uses to give its combat more depth and complexity. The game teaches you that shielded enemies can only be taken down by doing an aerial attack, but you can also freeze them by double tapping R2 and just hit them afterwards. You need to get behind people with stun batons to hit them, or you can just shoot them with the stun gun and it will knock them down and make them drop the weapon, or you can knock them down with a batarang, or freeze them. The medic enemy type can put an electric shield over enemies. The only way to remove the electricity is from a quick fire back cloth, but these enemies can still be hurt and knocked down by other gadgets, making them vulnerable to the multi-ground takedown special and sometimes thugs will attack you with an unblockable charge and they can be hit with a batarang to also instantly get taken out or redirect over them to send them flying. Enemies with blades have to be countered differently by holding triangle and letting go in between the swings. The timing is different depending on what enemy type has the blade. Takedowns are good for picking off more specific enemy types and all the gadget specials are useful for crowd control. The disarm special is great for high level play and doing challenges like the Endless Arena Iceberg Lounge. Since enemies can pick up weapons off the ground, you can easily find yourself in a situation where almost every enemy on the screen has a weapon. Some of these weapons can also be picked up by Batman, and while using it you can hit an enemy regardless of anything. 
There are a few more unique interactions, but you get the point. Arkham's approach to having many different kinds of interactions between Batman's large moveset and the large variety of enemies is the main ingredient to the depth and nuance of the combat system. But there's also a few systems going on in the background that help to enhance the overall experience. I've already mentioned how enemies can pick up dropped weapons, but they can also pick up each other. While doing the aerial attack on shielded enemies or the bat cost slam, Batman is invulnerable, giving you some space to pick your next target during the animation. Most of Batman's moves have an enemy that they prioritize to help single out specific enemies in a large crowd. For example, if I aim the bat claw in the general direction of an electrified enemy, regardless of how many enemies are nearby, Batman will always go for him first. Takedowns will prioritize special enemy types over regular thugs, priority number one being anyone who has a gun. You might not even notice this is happening, but it's a small detail that goes a long way in removing certain frustrations that could arise from trying to target one person in a crowd of 20 people. You're also not punished for playing defensively. You're allowed one dodge roll and you can redirect as many times as you want without breaking the combo. Going back to Spider-Man for a second, do you see why I said at the beginning you can only compare the games on a surface level? Spider-Man also has enemies that need to be hit with certain attacks before they can be damaged, but these enemies don't add as many unique interactions like the ones in Batman do. But on top of that, your 8 skill cooldowns and web shooters work on everything for the most part. It's also not impossible to do cool things with the combat system in Spider-Man. But to do these cool things, you're either limiting yourself by using less of the game's mechanics or by playing the game in a way that's borderline not intended. Being able to do an infinite air combo by repeating the same moves on someone that can't fight back does not automatically equal depth or complexity. The reason why this works in something like Devil May Cry is because you're not limited to the same five moves and you're also mixing and matching different moves that are good for utility or damage. Keeping an enemy in the air for a long time in Devil May Cry also requires a lot more effort because you need to learn how to jump cancel, which is a mechanic pretty much exclusive to Devil May Cry or just get better at keeping enemies suspended by using a variety of different moves. Batman's approach to depth is almost the reverse of Devil May Cry. Instead of giving Batman an extremely large moveset and letting him do air combat, they gave him a modest moveset but added an insane amount of variety when it comes to the way his moves interact with the enemies and the game's mechanics. I feel like I've made my point. Gun to the back of my head, which game would I rather play? I'm going for Spider-Man every time, because moment to moment it's overall a better video game in my opinion. And the swinging slaps. I didn't make this video because I feel superior for liking Batman's combat system more than Spider-Man, and if you like Spider-Man more than Batman, you're wrong. But for a long time I felt a sort of revisionist history going on when it comes to Arkham Knight. I understand the criticism of the story and the PC launch, but a lot of the time when I'm watching a review of an Insomniac Spider-Man game, when the gameplay section comes up, Arkham always comes up. And the reviewer either says that Spider-Man is like Batman but better, or it's just as good, when both of these couldn't be more wrong. People are allowed to have opinions, but sometimes I feel like these opinions don't come from actually comparing the two games and for the most part stem from this homogenized opinion that Arkham Knight was a bad game and the Spider-Man games are good games so that means that the combat is better right? In my humble opinion not only is Arkham's combat better but it was ahead of its time in a lot of ways substantiated by the fact that it's been almost a decade since this game came out and there hasn't been a single AAA big budget third person action game that even has half of what Arkham brings when it comes to depth in a combat system, unless your name is Devil May Cry 5. I didn't even mention that there's seven other playable characters. If you watch the whole thing, thank you for watching, I appreciate it. If you feel like Spider-Man has a better combat system, if I'm if I'm missing something, if I didn't if I wasn't fair, I know I spent a long time on Batman, way more than I did talking about Spider-Man, but at the same time, it's because there's just a lot more going on in Batman than there is in Spider-Man. But if you think I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. 
I like reading the comments. I like having a discussion and that's it. Thanks for watching.